There's been mud on my soul. There's been anger inside me. There's still unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I've been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams. Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. Unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I have been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams. Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. Then here you are at last. Free yourself from past and walk. The walk. Into the new. Be guided by what is true, causing no one harm, least of all you. Spirituality is the walk into the new. It's a journey we make from the old into the new, from the past into the present. From the darkness into the light, from the impurity to the realm of purity. The journey is subtle. The journey is deep. The journey is a journey from sin to virtue. If you study all the religions, most of the Western religions, for them, sin is an act. An action. If you do something wrong, that's sin. So it's more of actions. It has to do something with deed, act, karma. It focuses entirely on do's and don'ts. But if you study Indian religions and the concept of sin in Upanishads. It's entirely different. It's not about act. It's about state of being. When you are in the stage of unawareness, whatever you do, that is sin. But you are in the stage of awareness. Whatever you do, that constitute virtue. So the definition of pap and punya, the definition of virtue and sin is entirely different. In fact, the real meaning of the word sin is forgetfulness. It has less to do with actions because whatever you do in the stage of forgetfulness, it will be sin. And what is virtue? What is punya? Anything which is done in the stage of awareness, 
because in the higher heightened stage of awareness you cannot harm anyone you cannot hurt anyone in the stage of awareness the actions would never be unrighteous it's only in the darkened stage of unawareness in the stage of spiritual coma in the stage of spiritual unconsciousness in the stage of spiritual oblivion forgetfulness whatever you do that is sin and sins are addictive one sin leads to another one action leads to another and repetitive actions they cause formation of sanskars which are heart core difficult to erase unsurmountable at times and they ultimately lead to fall from grace fall from grace and then a great sense of guilt consciousness or power see and guilt is very burdening thing it's very heavy the weight of guilt is more than that the weight of sin guilt consciousness pulls you down to much more extent than the actual sin sin might be 1% the guilt may be 10% guilt leads to loss of enthusiasm guilt leads to lack of enthusiasm energy the desire to excel the desire for newness is lost so what is more dangerous guilt or sin both but guilt invariably follows sin but sometimes out of proportion and what is sin for one person may not be sin for another a person goes and eats non veg for him it is not sin but another person it constitutes sin so definition of sin also varies from person to person from time to time from place to place it all depends upon your belief system for a particular religion to eat at night is sin but there are others who enjoy at night without a trace of guilt consciousness so there is so much variation about the definition what exactly is sinful action and what exactly is virtuous action and as i said the only definition which is the highest definition is all which is done in the stage of awareness wakefulness watchfulness alertness constitute virtue all that is done in the stage of darkness unawareness coma unconsciousness unawareness unwatchfulness dreamy state the state of delirium sin is forgetfulness when you forget you're bound to perform something wrong so the definition of pap and punya has less to do with karma or action it has more to do with the inner state of awareness so today we must have we have heard many times in murli this word ajamil he symbolizes pinnacle of sin or he is the embodiment of sin the worst sinner the greatest sinner so what was is even a jamils get liberation if they follow the virtuous track a jamil indicates darkness a jamil indicates total forgetfulness it's not that he was not virtuous it is shown that he was a brahmin highly virtuous but 
fall from the grace but he entered into the what is called as dark night of the soul and we pass when a spiritual seeker pass through that tunnel of darkness that could be arbitrary that could be temporary but many times the seeker has to go through this tunnel of darkness where there is an acute depression suddenly when everything was going on so well and suddenly you feel the lack the animation is lost the verb is lost the vivacity is stolen life becomes dull life becomes drab spiritual people and spiritual places and spiritual atmosphere you start to abhor you just don't like even such threats comes and they will come because the path of spirituality is a very long path you begin from a you have to reach z but the journey is long waiting period the highest you cannot achieve overnight there would be a long waiting period and in this waiting period there would be many ups and down the vicissitudes of life sometimes you are extremely enthusiastic without you are doing anything all efforts are happening and sometimes in spite of doing everything nothing is happening in spite of trying to be a perfect purusharthi a intense effort maker you find that you are going down and down every passing day you are deteriorating so the journey is arduous it's an uphill task it's not so easy so one should never become over confident that i have reached i have attained my amritvela i have mastered or now i can control my tongue at any moment you will be tricked but it doesn't mean that you are going down even this up and down is a is a part of journey even this up and down teach is teaching you something your every mistake is your teacher the best teacher award goes to all your mistakes and all your sins some maya is needed to keep you awake don't become maya free it's not recommended in the brahmin life because if maya leaves you totally you will definitely go to sleep so some maya is needed it is like a thorn that keeps you awake it's a prick it's a prod so when maya comes it's good otherwise you will sleep into that self complacency yeah yeah if you are there is no maya and everything is going on smoothly know that you are on the wrong track some amount of maya is needed compulsory it is there should be some people who should disturb you from time to time there should be some people who should come to you who would become an obstacle in your path if you find that everything is going on smoothly and nobody is saying saying anything about me you are not doing seva it means yeah that is there but that is the, definitely there because every obstacle teaches you something now the same obstacle when it comes next time you will won't get affected so this is the real learning in fact this books cannot teach you spirituality media cannot teach you truth <coughs> truth is about practical life truth is about what hap- is happening to you it is not necessary that every day you keep on reading 100 things and then only you can be virtuous it's not about that it's about your self reflection it's a journey of reflection reflect contemplate you retrospect introspect this happened now the same thing cannot disturb me again so you become more and more resilient this is known as spiritual resilience you become more and more impregnable nothing can penetrate you now you become intact strong unflappable undisturbed 
but this lesson cannot be learned from books this life teaches you and only if you have a teaching attitude otherwise you just become a box of complaint just grumbling and grumbling and grumbling and grumbling nothing so coming to ajamil so mr ajamil this guy was very good in fact he was a brahmin he was a virtuous he was pious given to piety but somehow maya they don't leave anyone so maya was there even that time it has not changed its form rather it has become more refined they say that we deteriorate we go from from golden age we go from satot rajo tamo these stages but if you see maya maya it is reverse she is refining herself she is moving from tamo to then tamo pradhan from rajo to rajo pradhan from sato to sato pradhan at present she is at her purest form so for her the journey is reverse she has becoming purer and pure huh yeah royal whatever you call it so for her the journey is reverse and it is at times she is unidentifiable so this ajamili was quite good but then somehow attractions assault of lust he marries somebody which shown a prostitute so and then he gets nine children and she was with another child when a group of saints came and the villagers knew that this ajamil is a very mischievous guy so they purposefully deliberately sent that assemblage of saints to her house to his house but he was out of place and his wife tells and gives them food they get happy and they say that okay what you do now if a child is born you name him as nara he said okay so now this ajami the highly attracted towards his this 10th child but his life is full of vices evil doings and righteousness this stage of the soul in spiritual language is known as moral depravity moral depravity or there's yet another word spiritual lassitude laziness total laziness in spiritual disciplines it's a stage of spiritual lassitude or moral depravity total downfall no morality no it's a state of total irreligiousness so the time of death comes so from this side the god of death yamdoot the his messenger and from this side messengers of vishnu so when he is about to die he shouts narayan narayan so there is a confusion here because he has done all sinful actions so definitely the messengers of death want to take him away but then there is timely intervention so vishnu sparsha those godly messengers they say that no he will go to hell heaven they said no he will go to hell why he will go to heaven they said that because they took our boss name at the last moment so who ever takes our boss name he has to enter the kingdom of heaven and we will take him but there is a fight between these and ultimately the messengers of vishnu wins and they take him to the heaven so that's a very funny story but very deep even baba kept his son's name narayan rather in every indian family you will find names of children are like that narayan lakshmi radha so they are all names after dates deities so, <laughs> so that at least at the time of death at least the names of the children would be in, in on their lips because there is a great saying that whatever you remember at the end times the same with that same consciousness you take another birth so 
it is shown that even though we falsely took the name it was not probably the narayan himself is confused he thought he is taking my name so god is not very clever here <laughs> he is bolanath so coming out of the story to remember him at the time of death is not so easy whatever you have done throughout the life the same you will remember in your end times it is not possible that whole life you are living in the stage of forgetfulness and suddenly at the time of death you start remembering him it's not because at the time of death person remembers only that which has been on his mind for a very long time because at the time of death the preconscious is lifted and the everything from the subconscious comes out so if there is sin if there is unrighteousness if there is a dislike the same thing will come out at the time of death in bhakti there can be confusion narayana got confused but here the court of dharma raja there is no confusion in the court of god supreme justice there is no confusion they have latest updated audio visual system if you are told you did this and you deny baba will say wait with video with timings everything because your everything is getting recorded there baba said in last sunday's murli i have i have television i have cassettes and i keep on listening to your amrit vela tune it is like like very there is no the recording is very perfect these recordings can be this this can be noise but these are noise free with no mistakes <laughs> is a perfect editing happens here so to stay in the stage of awareness all the time is the goal to stay in that stage of wakefulness all the time is the goal and for that you need silence and for that keep on reading keep on understanding keep on churning knowledge so that knowledge stays in your mind otherwise circumstances are so different so diverse the whole day takes you to the stage of forgetfulness so there should be intermittent solitude and intermittent silence and intermittent stage of introversion or seek nature nature is so harmless we talk of satsang but yet there is it another sang and that is the sang of that is the company of nature prakriti it is so silent you enter the crowd and you lose something and come out you enter prakriti you gain some out something and come out you enter prakriti it is never happen that you lose something it's only with the crowd that you lose your calm your mind your heart energy but in nature nature fills you crowd depletes you so that's the story of ajamal sin and virtue when drunkard happens to die and he reaches heaven he says god how come heaven i never did anything good i never helped anyone whole life i was busy in drinking how i am entering heaven i hardly remained awake i was most of the time sleeping or drowsy or drinking so how come i am in heaven so god says what he must have said <laughs> no he said when you used to drink wine you also used to take salads so that was technically counted as fasting so because of that you are entering <laughs> because you never took anything with your drinks when you used to take wine there used to be salads sometimes so we technically it has been counted as fasting and because of this thing you are entering heaven om shanti